Pastor Nick coming back again with another devotional uh, from the book of Psalm. And I'm so glad that you can join me this morning. Uh, we're still in Psalm chapter 7. Uh, as you go in there, I pray that you would uh, consider sharing this with somebody. If you haven't done so already, uh, please follow me on YouTube, uh, Instagram, Facebook. The information should be on the screen. And uh, join us on the journey for this morning devotional, this morning uh, motivation to help jumpstart your morning as you read this book of Psalm, very real book, a book that I've been reading a lot during the pandemic since it started, uh, so I can continue to process my feelings and my thoughts and find that God is my help. And this is what the book of Psalm is really, really showing us. And David in Psalm chapter seven is going through this prayer and he's talking to God about uh, help for his enemies. And we went through verse one through five yesterday, and today we're gonna to look at verse six. Um, we're gonna start there. And actually six through eight, he says, rise up, O Lord, in your anger. Lift yourself up against the fury of my enemies. Awake, O my God, you have appointed a judgment. Let the assembly of the peoples be gathered around you and over, take, and over it, take your seat on a high. Show the world that you're still in control. The Lord judges the peoples. Judge me, O Lord, according to my righteousness and according to the integrity that is in me. David is praying and after he gets done through verse one through four, he's praying for help for his enemies. And he says, Lord, I need you to rise up. Um, rise up like a judge and help me during this time. Defend me against my enemies, judge my enemies, and bring salvation to me. It says, awake, oh my God. It, sometimes it feels like God is asleep. Sometimes it feels like God has forgotten about you. But I want you to know, God is not asleep. He has not forgotten about you. He neither slumbers nor he sleeps. He's aware of everything that's going on. He's just waiting to hear the sound of your voice, the sound of your prayers your conversation with him, asking him to rise up, to lift you up, all right, to help you in the time of trouble. And David says that the Lord will assemble the people and take his seat on high to show that he's the God of all creation. He's the God of the just and the unjust. He's the God of the righteous and the unrighteous. He's the God of all of eternity and no one will take his place and let the people recognize that he is the final judge. Paul says, and I hope this helps somebody this morning. Paul says in Romans chapter 12, vengeance is mine, says the Lord. God says, I'll take care of people. He says, don't reward evil with evil, reward evil with good. I need to help somebody here for a minute. Pettiness can be vengeful. We don't call it vengeance, we call it being petty. And sometimes we get in God's way, we stop what God's trying to do because we're proving to him that we're not mature enough for him to move because we're trying to overcome evil with evil. His prescription is, and this is hard, love your enemies. He says, if they're hungry, feed them. If they're thirsty, give them something to drink. Because in doing so, you heap coals of fire on their head. And watch this. Some of y'all may not like this. Because sometimes we want people to suffer. And you know, when you're really mad at somebody, you just want God to take them out. You know, may not be death, but you know, just do something bad to them. But the reality is, God's vengeance may not be the way that we think it is. Sometimes his vengeance is him really coming there and handling his business. But sometimes his vengeance is correction for those people too, to give them a chance to change. So that everybody can recognize, watch this, that he is the king, that he is the judge. So today when you get ready to go to work, there's somebody that's there that may be getting on your nerves or somebody that you don't like. God is testing you every single day to see how, how your character is can you be good to those that aren't good to you? I'm not saying you have to be their friend. I'm not saying you have to like the person. What I'm saying is, is can you love people with the love of Jesus even when they don't deserve it? Oh, that's hard for some of us. 
It's hard for some of us, but he says, I want you to be able to rise up in the middle of everybody, you know, and everybody look up and see we're all the same under this judge. All right. And here's, here's where David really kind of gets himself together in verse eight, verse eight, he says, the Lord judges the peoples. And then watch this. He turns it on himself and says, judge me, O Lord, according to my righteousness and according to the integrity that is in me. David, while he was looking for God to, to take care of everybody else, he flips the script and says, Lord, look at me, too. Our prayer today shouldn't be about God taking out everybody else. Lord, look in me. What is in me that's getting in my own way? Sometimes we need God to judge us. Now, I know we're in the don't judge me culture and they, you know, misquote, judge not lest you be judged. But that's a whole nother lesson. Uh, uh, you know, but but the reality is, is that David flips the script and recognizes that I need to have some internal work done. Because here's the thing, y'all. We're praying for God to change the enemy. And I pray and there's nothing wrong with that. But the reality is, God, I need you to work on me, too. Work on me in the, to the point where what they do doesn't even bother me like it used to. I don't know who this is for, but some of you got a workplace adversary. And they keep winning because they keep pressing the right buttons and you keep reacting inappropriately. Today, when you go to work, commit to God that you're going to respond appropriately and ask God to work on you so you can re respond appropriately to outside and external stressors. Because why? I need God to look intently in me. I'm glad I'm praying for you, but dealing with me is a 24-7 job. I need to focus on me, help others, and focus on me. Bear your bur help you bear your burdens, but I got to be able to bear my own. And David, uh, as we come to this close, our, this is where I'll be our prayer today, is, Lord, do an internal look in me. Work on me on the inside. Because I need it worked on. If there's any anger and any vengeance in me at all, work on, work me, work on it in me, God. And let me give it to you and let you take care of them. Let me focus on being a child of God and let you take care of those adversaries that are against me. Come on, let's pray. Father, I thank you for this day. Thank you for this moment. Thank you for this time. Thank you, Lord, for what we've learned today. I pray in Jesus' name that you would um, work on us internally. That, Lord, as you're judging others who do things against us, that, Lord, you would Flip the mirror around on us and work on us too. That, Lord, you would do it in your righteousness and your integrity. I pray that you would uh, transform us from the inside out. Forgive us for holding on for re to resentment, to extreme anger, to um, vengeance and all those things. I pray that you would create in us a clean heart. Please renew a right spirit within us. I pray, Lord, that you would help us, Lord, to um, respond appropriately in hard times, that when we see our adversaries, we can respond the right way, the godly way, trusting and believing that you are our great defense. And Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, you forgive us for responding inappropriately all these, all these days. Give us the wisdom to respond the right way. I pray, Lord, that you would hold us up, protect us, and keep us. Bless us on our jobs to be able to manage the stressors and all the things that come along with it and the adversaries and the snakes in the garden. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you all. See you tomorrow morning. Again, get somebody to join us on the journey. See you.